We're going to be continuing today our mini-series on preservation, and today we're going to be covering in a very short little video the prerequisites of acidification for preserving your product. I'm John, the physicist, and welcome to The Physicist. <laughs> So, when we talk about preservation and acidification, why do we talk about those things? Well, as a rule, exceptions will apply. To preserve your product, you are going to need to acidify it. That's important because, generally speaking, yeast mold bacteria, they tend to prefer to be in a non-highly acidic environment. Now, think of it like this. Think of it as uh, an oak forest and your microbiological uh, flora, they are the oak trees growing up out of the ground. When you use your preservation method, what you're doing is you are pulling out, burning, whatever it may be, those oak trees. But those oak trees have dropped acorns, and what you want to do is make sure those acorns don't grow into the oak trees as well. So what you do is you put some weed matting down, like you would in your garden and that will inhibit and create a hostile environment for those acorns to grow. That weed matting, that is what the acidification does for the product. Now technically anything with a pH below 4.2, i.e. more acidic than 4.2, is known as highly acidic. We need to be bringing the product into that highly acidic area to keep it preserved. It's also the point at which lots of preservatives work best as well. Now that depends on the preservation method that you use, but it is important if you want to maintain a product's shelf life to be consistently high, you have to acidify it. And you can do that in many different ways. You can use citric acids, you can use lactic acids, malic acid, succinic acid, ascorbic acid, aka vitamin C. There are many different acids that you can use, and each one of them will have a different flavor profile. Some of them will be uh, dry, some of them will be citrusy, some of them will be like apple core, which is malic acid. Lactic acid is, relatively speaking, quite neutral. So you can choose the acid to match the profile that you're looking for with your product, but it is important that you get it down to below 4.2. We would suggest that what you do is bring it into the three range. You will need to be able to test for that. You can get generally very, very cheaply litmus paper that is a very simple quick and easy way of testing but just remember that the litmus paper will generally have about a one year shelf life from when it's open as they will absorb moisture from the air alternatively if you want to be more accurate because a litmus test will only tell you whether it's in the three range or in the two range for example then you can go and get a ph meter those are a little bit more complicated, but they are more accurate as long as you have calibrated them correctly using the buffer solution, which will be supplied with the pH meter. And you can expect to pay £15 for a very cheap Hong Kong, AliExpress, eBay style pH meter. Some of them are very poor, some of them are actually quite good. And an average middle of the range uh, consumer one will be in 40 to 70 pounds. They are worth spending a little bit more on if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, then I would suggest always use the litmus tape paper as a backup to your pH meter readings. Very simply, you need to bring your product into that range to make sure your preservation has and keeps its effectiveness, its efficacy. That's the prerequisite. Anything you do from that with your choice of pasteurization will be based upon the foundations of acidification of your product. So get that right and everything else will hopefully work as long as your product is correct on those foundations. I'm John, the physicist, signing out.